My name is Tony Bancroft. I'm a Disney animator and director, but now I am uh, running a program at APU, Azusa Pacific University, as the animation chair, uh, animation program director, sorry, animation program director of a, a brand new uh, four-year degree there in animation. And I'm Tom Bancroft, um, and I'm also a Disney animation veteran and a supervisor there, and then also author and I am also now have started up an animation program and is in the head of that uh, at Lipscomb University in Nashville, Tennessee. I worked at uh, Disney for over 12 years and I was very active in the 90s doing 2D animation, which I love. Yeah. Um, and that's how we, animation, yeah! That's how we started out, Tom and I, as 2D animation artists and animators. Uh, so we worked on um, Let's see, Rescuers Down Under, um, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, all the films that you grew up with. Aladdin, and um, you've already skipped over Lion King. The Lion King <laughs> came next. No, yeah. after Aladdin was That's the Lion true. King. Okay, sorry. Then I worked on The Lion King, animated Pumbaa, The Warthog, and I went on to uh, Mulan, which I co-directed the movie Mulan, and uh, then went back into animation on The Emperor's New Groove to animate Kronk. Mine's very similar. Uh, I was there for about all the same time, uh, 12 years, and uh, worked on uh, Rescuers Down Under, uh, Beauty and the Beast, uh, Aladdin, and then uh, Lion King, I did Young Simba, Pocahontas, I animated Pocahontas, and then um, also did Tarzan and Mulan. I was the supervising animator of Mushu, the dragon. And then a few others, like Brother Bear, I worked on too, and um, some shorts. Also worked at Big Idea Productions doing CG animation briefly. So you did Brother Bear 2? Also. On, oh, not the Brother sequel. Brother Bear also. Brother Bear the first one. Right. Okay, good. We had some mutual friends uh, from Disney right. that had gone independent, that were not at Disney anymore. And they had started using TV Paint. Uh, I think Dave Nethery was one. Mm -hmm. uh, that was where I first heard about TV Paint. He was Paint. your cleanup lead. He was on my Mushu. cleanup lead on Mushu. And then later on, Aaron Blaze is a good friend of ours, and he was uh, talking about it in a lot of his videos, his how-to videos. And I then spoke to him about it, and he was very, you know, big on yes, it's a great program to animate in, very much like how we worked at Disney. And so that was all I needed to hear. I first came to know TV Paint. Uh, when I started to develop a project and I was hired to direct and supervise a 2D animated project that was going to be for a theme park in China. And I, I knew that I needed something, a pipeline that would be quick and versatile and I didn't want to do a traditional animation on paper and pencil because I knew that pipeline would be slow. I got to scan everything and I just wanted something all in one. So I tried TV Paint and it was actually Aaron Blaze's uh, tutorial. Yeah. I watched it in one afternoon and he did such a great job to just define how to use TV paint and it was felt like I was working traditionally with pencil and paper again. Everything was easy to find. I felt like I, within an afternoon, I had actually animated my first animation test just watching Aaron's tutorial and finding different things and knowing intuitively where things were it worked really well and I had already done my first test and got it approved by the client. It was great. Wow. That's, um, That's a testimonial. That is a testimony. I'm impressed. But it's true. We've we both found... And I had told you about TV Pan. I think I had already used it at that point. Yeah, you had um, used it first. Yeah, yeah. just like Aaron had said. Wow, it's, it's easy to use. It's not very different from our, our traditional animation workflow from Disney. So... Uh, definitely was the product for us once you go tv paint you don't ever want to go back <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so and i didn't think that would happen i thought um uh we both had been using a cintiq so the the digital drawing part of it wasn't anything new right uh but just, like just using the program and, and stuff uh was new and and for us 2d animators the the line is super important does it feel and look like a pencil line right and tv paint's got a very nice pencil in there that uh, we use the same one, it's the 2B one. You don't want to ever go back to flipping paper. Well, not, yeah, the, I mean, it's just scanning. The, it's the scanning afterwards. It's a nightmare. And, and just being able to undo and just undo one line and go yeah. back a couple lines. And I'm addicted to that now <laughs> because I used to be the, the animator that would just erase, 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 or have to rub something down. Now I could do a transparency or I could just bring the opacity down, put another layer on top and nail in you know, a drawing on top of it as my final. You just don't have to stop. You know, you don't have to oh, throw something away yeah, and so we're, start over. We're big proponents of what we call tradigital animation now, which is being able to do it digitally, but with the same 
uh, intuitiveness of being a 2D animator because that's definitely our roots. That's how we grew up as 2D animators. So being able to take what works well with digital animation and TV paint, what they bring to it, but also with you know what we know about really trying to put our emotions into our drawings, really trying to get the performance across. You don't, you cannot have something that just burdens you where you're thinking about the technology. Mm -hmm. And I feel like TV Paint is the best program I've seen out there because the, the technology is not a burden, it's a help. Yeah, and I'll add to that just to say that um, I've tried Two Boom Harmony. It's a, it's a great product and it's good for TV animation specifically. Uh, but for say higher end, more classic feature film animation, and that's why we use it with our students. That we we have TV Paint at both of our programs. I'm at Lipscomb uh, University in Nashville, and uh, it's important to me to be able to go. Okay, I don't want you to get burdened with all the other stuff. You, you really only need ten things to know how to do TV Paint, right? Same with Photoshop. Just those easy ten things. You can always add things and do color and things like that down the road, more complex uh, processes. But to me, TV Paint makes the screen big. It makes the art the prime real estate. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, I, I don't understand other products because Photoshop does the same thing. They make everything very small on the sides, but the art is the thing that you're, that's the biggest on the yeah, screen. Yeah, you gotta have the canvas be the thing. Yeah, that's, and I don't know why Toon Boom Harmony, I know there's ways to make it work, but they, primarily make the real estate for the art very small yeah so well and the I, I have a program too at Azusa Pacific University and we just started this year um, and our first year is all about learning the principles of animation uh, through doing 2d animation um, and we get into CG later but I told the program director or the chairman of, of the program I said I if I'm gonna run this and I want to do it I really want to from day one the students need to have TV paint we need to be doing it uh, tradigital animation, where we're doing learning the principles traditionally, but in the digital wor world using TV paint and Cintiqs two together, because that combination is a powerful one that they'll be able to work quickly. We have everything set up for them. They don't need to get anything else or any other plugins. It's all there. It's an all-in-one comprehensive program where they can do rough animation, cleanup animation, all the way through color. And it's a one pipeline in one seat for each student. And that's what I love from, from a teaching standpoint. I think it's kind of an all-in-one package. And I don't know why you would really need anything else. Mm -mm. You know, to me, uh, traditional animation is, uh, really comes together in the ability to be able to do really good timing um, and arcs and things like that. And it's those principles of animation that I really stress to my students. It's the stuff that I think people these days, uh, and I'm gonna sound like an old man, but <laughs> kids these days, they just kind of skip over some of those uh, very important principles of like slow ins and slow outs and the importance of charts and in-betweens and things like that. That's what really makes, it's those noodly little things that makes animation great. Um, and I always tell my students to really, yes, you, you're an actor, yes, you need to put in um, yourself into your scenes and that kind of thing but you also need to really refine it to a point that it's a, at a professional level. I think it is that smoothness. Like people respond when they see a James Baxter piece of tr traditional animation or, James or Baxter. Glenn Keane. Glenn Keane. They're, obviously they're, they're responding to how beautiful the drawings are. They're also responding to the performance and how great the acting is. But the thing that they also are responding to is the smoothness and the gracefulness of the movement. And that's all arcs, and it's all timing, and it's in-betweens, and it's that, that last refinement that Tony's talking about. And that's what they're not seeing in their work. And they're going, because they don't want to put the time in. And yeah. so it's that finishing touch of really adding on all those slow in in-betweens that it's boring to do and not so fun. Um, but now with the new Cintiqs and um, things, you can get more precise. Um, in-betweens and that's what's also exciting about the world we live in now that the Cintiqs have now come up to that level so that traditional animation can really be done to a fine a fine line like that yeah. um, is super important um, and that's where TV paint comes in but well, and I'll add one more thing too yeah. and just say that I recently worked on I, I still try and animate I, I like to direct and animate and move around as much as possible and I love to draw still so I recently worked on Mary Poppins Returns, 
and which has some 2D animation in this. Um, and we, the director involved with the animation decided to do the whole pipeline with as close to how they did it in the original Mary Poppins as possible. So it wasn't tradigital, uh, it wasn't digital at all. We actually had paper and pencil and, and there was a point though when I, because I had gotten so used to the TV paint pipeline uh, that I, I went to the director and said, is there any way we could change it? Why are we doing this on paper? It felt so, even though I grew up that way with pencil and paper, it felt so archaic and so clumsy in a lot of ways that I felt like, wouldn't it be easier if we just did this all on, in TV paint? And they had considered it, but they really wanted to get a certain look, I guess, of the original Mary Poppins. But I gotta say, it was it was awkward. It was a, it was a, to go back. Yeah, it was. It was one mm. of those things where I felt like I was going back in time a little bit, and I thought because I know there's easier ways, and I don't have my undo button. I gotta race. I gotta race all this stuff, or I gotta make this change. I I could just cut and paste and move this over here. And What's this pink I, eraser thing? I literally yeah. was going to a Xerox machine and having make copies of things and cut things out and paste it up and move it over here. Oh my I'm gosh! Like, I'm like, we could do this so much easier if it was just on TV. I've drawn paint. it too big. I like it. It's too big. How do I move it and reduce it right here? <laughs> exactly. Oh, I have to go to a photocopier. Uh, oh boy. That's a nightmare. Yeah. So, young people, be thankful for TV paint and <laughs> yeah. Cintiqs, uh, all of those wonderful tools yeah. that are out there because you can still make that wonderful old-fashioned look, old-fashioned, I'm calling us old, um, but that traditional hand-drawn animation look, but That's in your right. digital medium and get all the wonderful benefits um, of digital medium. And Tom, the most important thing, as we always say, <laughs> Animate, Animate from, from the, the heart. heart.